Hey guys, Ms. Peterson here, and welcome to our chemistry lecture on compounds and molar mass. In this lecture, we're going to be slowing down and going over how to read a chemical formula and determine the atoms that make it up, what a mole is, and how we calculate the molar mass, or the molecular weight of our molecules and compounds. Okay, cool? Okay, cool. Let's get started. Now, first, just a little reminder about the periodic table. The number on the bottom is typically the mass. Okay, so hydrogen has a mass of 1.008. Atoms of carbon have an average mass of 12.001. Fluorine, 18.998, etc. Okay, so it is the mass that we'll be paying attention to in uh, this lecture. So, what is a compound again? Compound is any time multiple atoms are chemically bonded together. They could be ionic, they could be covalent, doesn't matter. But if we got atoms chemically bonded together, it is a compound. Now, a molecule is specific to covalent compounds. So remember, covalents are the ones that are formed from sharing of electrons with only the non-metal elements. The non-metal elements being the ones on this part of the periodic table, the ones outlined in blue and purple here, um, as well as the noble gases, though those don't typically bond. Also remember that hydrogen is a non-metal as well. So some examples of compounds, we got table salt, sodium chloride. That is a compound formed from a sodium atom bonded to a chlorine atom. Okay, so one sodium and one chlorine atom, and it is an ionic compound. We got sugar, okay, which is a covalent compound or a molecule formed of 12 carbon atoms, 22 hydrogen atoms, and 11 oxygen atoms. Okay, we got water, H2O, another covalent compound formed when two hydrogens bond to one oxygen atom. Yep. Uh, we got carbon dioxide, another covalent compound of one carbon and two oxygen atoms. Okay, all chemical compounds. So how do we decode these chemical formulas? Okay, well, as you saw, the subscripts determine the number of atoms. Okay, now, so H2O means two hydrogens and one oxygen. And you might be asking yourself, well, where is the one? It's invisible. Chemists don't like to write ones. So if there's no number there, there's an invisible one. Okay. Um, CO2, one carbon, two oxygens. Now, this is an example of where the uppercase versus lowercase distinction becomes really important. For all of our chemical symbols, they're represented by one uppercase and one lowercase. So if you have CO and they're both uppercase, that's communicating carbon and oxygen not a cobalt atom, okay? Um, and kind of along with that, uh, Cl, chlorine, is super, super common. Carbon bonded to iodine, Ci, not that common. So if you're ever in doubt when looking at a particular font and wondering if it's carbon, iodide, or chlorine, it's going to be chlorine. Now, if there are parentheses in our chemical formula, what that means is just like math class, that number gets distributed in. It applies to everything inside the parentheses. So AlOH3, aluminum hydroxide, has one aluminum, and then three times that invisible one of oxygen, and three hydrogen atoms. Okay. Uh, CaPO4, what do you think that one has? Well, we got three calciums. And then the two goes to that phosphorus. Again, it's phosphorus and oxygen, not polonium. Okay, two phosphoruses. And then how many oxygens? Okay, well, we got four oxygens, two times, two PO4s. So a total of eight oxygens, okay? You are multiplying, not adding. So uh, what is a mole? Now... A mole is the unit that we use for counting atoms or molecules, okay? When we talk about atoms, they're just too small for us to count them individually. So we typically count by Avogadro's number of atoms. Just like when you order donuts, you order donuts by the dozen, right? Okay, so one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So if we have one mole of atoms, that means we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. If we have one mole of molecules, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules, 
et cetera, et cetera. And I highly recommend you check out my video about what is a mole to get a deeper understanding of Avogadro's number and this concept of the mole. But we're gonna use the concept of a mole to understand what the molar mass is, okay? The molar mass is the amount of grams one mole of that element or compound would weigh, okay? Its units are grams per mole, okay? G moles is what I call them, okay? So the grams that are in one mole, again, one mole being 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of that element. Now, to find the molar mass, if you're just looking at an element, it's just the atomic weight on the periodic table, okay? Those numbers are going to be equivalent. But if we have a compound, we're going to first decode the chemical formula and determine the number of atoms of each element. Then we're going to multiply the number of atoms by the mass of that element because, you know, if we got one hydrogen, it has a mass of one. If we got two hydrogens, it has a mass of two, two times one. Okay? If we got one carbon, it's got a mass of 12. If we got two carbons, it has a mass of 24, two times 12. Yeah, add all those masses together and we got our molar mass. So let's look at calcium chloride. We got calcium, oxygen, and hydrogen. Now, how many atoms of calcium? Just one. How many atoms of oxygen? That two gets distributed in, so two. And two atoms of hydrogen. Then we go to our periodic table to get the masses. So calcium has a mass of 40.078. So we'll times that by 40.078. And again, depending on the periodic table you're using, it might be a more or less precise number. The number of decimal places doesn't matter. Just go by whatever's on the periodic table in front of you. Uh, and then we have oxygen and hydrogen. Hydrogen has a mass of 1.008, and oxygen has a mass of 15.99. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to here. So oxygen 15.99 and oxygen 1.008. Yep. Then we're going to multiply those together. 40.078, uh, 16 times 2 or 15.99 times 2 gives me 31.98. And 2 times 1.008 is 2.016. So then we add all of those together. And the molar mass of calcium hydroxide is 74.07 grams per mole. Okay, cool. Okay, cool.